Hello, it's Eleanor from Hastings Museum and Art Gallery again here. Uh, I hope you've had a good week. Um, this is the second of our festive make sessions and I'm going to be showing you how to make three different kinds of Christmas decorations. We're going to be looking at lanterns, uh, paper stars and mini Christmas trees. Please have a go and tell us what you think. Light is important for winter festivals of many different faiths, Christmas, Diwali and Hanukkah for example. I'm going to show you how to make a simple lantern using an old jam jar. You can use a real tea light candle inside or a battery powered pretend one. The lantern works by using different layers of paper in different thicknesses and colours to build up a three dimensional scene with darker lower layers looking nearer than the lighter more misty layers. I've imagined a winter landscape in the mountains, but you can experiment with any scene you like. It helps to have a jam jar with straight edges and no labels on it. You can soak the paper labels off, but might need something stronger like nail varnish remover to remove the glue. Start by measuring your jar and deciding how far up you want your design to go. The jar I used had a convenient line around it near the top, so I made my design to finish there and have a nice neat edge. Once you know how much space you have, you can work out how many layers you want to include, what each will be made of and what each will depict. Each layer needs to wrap around the jar with enough overlap to stick it down securely. Cut a plain piece of paper to the full height and width of the design to make the first layer and to help you plan out the others. The first layer will be the darkest and sit at the bottom of your lantern. It shouldn't be too tall as you want to leave enough room for the other layers. Ideally you want the area where the two ends meet to line up cleanly and not be so high that you can see the edges of the back through the lantern. I used a marker pen to draw the silhouette of a valley and hills covered in Christmas trees on plain paper. The next part of the scene sits above on the same piece of paper but left white. On my lantern this is a snowy hill that sits behind the valley and ridge with the Christmas trees growing on it. Draw the upper edge in pencil. The next layer is made of greaseproof or chasing paper, whichever you have to hand. I've used greaseproof paper. Cut a piece of the paper the same size as the sheet of plain paper and then fold over about one centimetre along the bottom. Put the plain paper inside the fold so you can see the trees, ridge, valley, snowy hill through the greaseproof paper. Use a pencil to draw out where you want this next misty layer to go, making sure you've left some room at the top of your jar. Remove the plain paper sheet from the fold and cut out the trees, ridge, valley, snowy hill. Then cut out the misty layer of greaseproof paper. Tuck the plain paper sheet back into the fold. This will give a neat bottom edge. Use sellotape to stick one end of the sheets to the jar, then wrap them round and stick the other end down, overlapping the first piece of sellotape. The final step is to cut a piece of greaseproof or tracing paper large enough to cover the whole area of your design. This is the most translucent layer which goes over the other layers and holds everything in. Use sellotape to stick one end to the sheets already on the jar and then wrap around the jar making sure this last sheet is tight before using the final piece of sellotape to stick down the other end. Finally put your tea light or battery tea light in the jar and light. If you use a real candle it's really important to put the jam jar on something heat resistant like a tile or placemat, away from anything that could accidentally blow into the flame. Never leave a candle unattended, especially if there are children or animals around. You can make these eight pointed stars in different sizes to decorate a range of places. Make larger ones to hang from the ceiling, make smaller ones to hang on the tree. Thicker kinds of wrapping paper work best as the stars made from them are stronger and more rigid. The stars are made of two four-pointed stars stuck together. You can make the two stars from the same paper or use different patterns. For each four-sided star, you'll need a square piece of paper. I folded over the corners of this roll of wrapping paper until they met in the middle, so I could cut two square pieces from the roll without wasting any paper. You then need to fold your square top to bottom, left to right and corner to corner until you have a plus and X folds on your square. 
On each of the plus lines running from edge to edge, mark off a point the same distance from the centre. This will decide the height of your star. The further from the centre, the taller or fatter your star will be. Cut from the edges of the paper to the marks you've made. Then you need to fold each from each corner to the diagonal fold, as I've shown in the diagram. It's actually more important to fold from the point you cut to than it is to fold along the diagonal line. So if you need to, fold from the point in the corner to the end of your cut, even if that goes over the diagonal line. You can trim or fold under any excess paper, as long as you do the same on all sides. I hope the diagram helps make that understandable. Next, put glue on each left hand or right hand flap. I choose one and do the same for consistency on each side. And then stick the other flap on top. Do this for all four and you should end up with a three dimensional star like this. While you're waiting for the glue to dry, you can make your other four pointed star. The final stage is to stick your two four sided stars together back to back. They won't be flat on the back, so it's a bit tricky. I suggest resting the bottom star on a bowl so it doesn't wobble about while you're trying to stick the top star to it. Squeeze some PVA or Yoohoo glue onto the edges of the bottom star and place the other star on top. Try to encourage contact between the glue and the top star. I just kind of pinched them together. But don't worry if it's not attached everywhere. You just need enough stick for the stars to stay together. Leave it to dry and then add a piece of ribbon or string so you can hang it up. These book folding Christmas tree decorations are quick and easy to make, provided you have a spare paperback book that you're happy to sacrifice. You can leave them plain or decorate with ribbons and tinsel or even spray paint. If you're uncomfortable with book dismemberment, look away now. At this point, I feel I should apologise to Michael Dobbs. I did enjoy your book, but it's now fulfilling a new destiny. Start by gently pulling away the cover from the spine of your paperback. The important bit is the glue which holds the pages together. We need to keep that intact. Count up 50 pages and then begin to separate them in one block from the rest of the book. As you can see from the photograph, by pulling gently, you should be able to tear along the spine, leaving the glue in place. With any luck, you should be able to get a couple of Christmas trees from a single novel. The rest is just folding. So starting with your first page, your first fold should fold the top right hand corner down so that it runs along the spine. The second fold should then take the edge on the right hand side and fold it over again along the end of the spine. And then the final fold is to fold up the point at the bottom so that it is in line with the bottom of the pages. You basically keep doing that until every page is done and by the end you should have a Christmas tree. Um, the pages may be reluctant to spread round evenly, evenly because they are um, conforming to where the glue is, where they were stuck together. Try running your thumb along the folded edges near the top to encourage them. As you can see, I decided to keep my tree quite simple and I just made a star to go at the top. I cut the star shape from a piece of corrugated cardboard and then coloured it in with a gold marker pen. Then I um, put a cocktail stick up through one of the channels inside the cardboard and poked the other end into the top of the tree. I hope you've managed to have a go and that you enjoyed it. Um, please share what you've made by posting on social media using hashtag festivemakes. 
Um, next week I will be back and that video will be showing you how to make some simple homemade gifts. Uh, I hope you can join me then. Have a good week. Bye.